I've got a message for all you dusty dudes out there. These women out here see you, and they're not having none of your nonsense. Welcome to Escaping the Echo Chamber. Uh, not too long ago, I came across a video, uh, saw a video by a fellow YouTuber by the name of Chris Logic, and it was her uh, interpretation or her, her symbols, signals on how to determine if a dude is a dusty dude. Um, I saw this video and there were things in it that, that stuck out to me because I've been, you know, thinking about, you know, in terms of if you're focusing on improving, you know, the black community, relationships between the, the black men and black women have got to improve as well. And there were things that she said in there that I think have merit. And there are things in there that I'm like, uh, that, that's, that's, that's interesting. So I wanted to address the address some of the things she said in her video, and uh, let's start with just what she described as how she defined a dusty dude as. Um, her description of a dusty dude is somebody who's broke, selfish, lacks the provider mindset, and then looks for women to go 50-50, um, basically a roommate. Now, broke, like hands down, 100%. If a dude is broke, and this is this is to women, you know, if you meet a dude who's broke, my suggestion is to let him handle that situation first, because dating is not should not be his top priority. Like he needs to handle that. He needs to be able to provide for himself and and take care of his financial situation. Um, so, like that's my advice for females. You know, let him. I'm not even saying hate him or 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 degrade him, but just let him handle that. And dude, you need to be handling that. Like you, if, if you're broke, that should be your number one priority. Let me get my finances in order. Let me get myself in order. Let me be able to take care of myself and then worry about dating, worrying about a relationship. As far as the provider mindset, if you are, I think that mindset comes in play later in a relationship. If you're just dating, that, that shouldn't necessarily, that shouldn't necessarily be as evident because there isn't. Um, and it depends on the level of commitment, but still, like I said, if, if you're dating, you're not married, that's like, it's not your job to provide for, you know, another adult. As far as the 50, 50, you know, that, especially when you're, you're early in a relationship, everybody, each party should be handling their finances, should be taking care of their finances. Like if, if you're dealing with a woman who wants you to pay her bills and y'all are just dating. That's a problem. So, like, like I'm I, I'm curious as to why why Chris would believe um, that it's a boyfriend's job, not a husband. It's a boyfriend's job to pay his girlfriend's bills. Like, there is they haven't committed to each other for life. They're and and in fact, we're not even. At some points, it's not even a boyfriend. It's just people who are dating, who are getting to know each other. And, and that's a very early part in the relationship. So, like, why would you expect that person to be paying your bills? Like, that that in itself is seems to be a very unhealthy and self-centered approach from, a, from the woman's perspective. Like, why do you expect the dude to, to pay for you? You're an adult, right? Well, let me get into some of the questions she um address or some of the issues she addressed that identify a dude as being dusty so that's what a dusty dude is you know she said broke selfish um yeah and if, if a person is selfish then that's probably not a person you just want to be involved with man or woman um but she's like there's certain questions a dusty individual a dusty dude will ask um such as can you cook <sighs> okay let me go through the questions and then i mean because she says do you can you cook um do you own your own home um, do you drive your own car? How many bodies do you have? Do you have a degree? Where do you work? So let's go back to, can you cook? Like that's <laughs> like, that's a question. Like, I think that question should be asked both ways. Any, any adult should dating another adult should ask that question because every adult should be, if, if you eat, if you're an adult and you eat, you should be able to cook <laughs> because if you're an adult and you don't cook, how are you eating? Like, are you are you only eating out, which can't be good healthy health wise, um, finance wise? It, it just doesn't seem to be a, a very smart thing to do. 
and it's just like how are you how are you feeding yourself if you can't cook if you're a grown person man or woman and you can't cook like what like are you living at home are you living with a with a with your parents who's cooking for you that's my question so somebody asking you can you cook man or woman like like you should definitely be able to cook because if you if you eat you should be able to feed yourself like questions like do you have a degree where do you work these are basic questions like so it's almost as if she doesn't want anybody to ask any questions to get to know her because those are basic questions like you just like just normally naturally come up in a conversation and the fact that it seems that if you don't want people asking these questions you don't like the answers you have to these questions that's what it appears like so it appears that if if you don't want somebody asking you do you have a degree or, or, or where do you work like are you unemployed and you and you just don't want you don't want the, the, the person you're dating to know this and if you are unemployed that might make sense as why you expect somebody you're dating to be providing for you because I, I guess you're dating you're looking for a meal ticket that's not a healthy that's not a healthy approach to a relationship uh and especially if you're just talking about you know building a strong long-lasting relationship if you're just looking for somebody to 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 feed you and clothe you um yeah i, I suggest going back to live with your parents because you're, you're looking you, you you want somebody to make you a dependent uh you're not looking for a husband you know or a boyfriend um the the question about how many bodies like dudes do you really want to know the answer to the question because she's i think that's a that's a very fair criticism like do you really want to know all of the and number one do you think a woman is actually going to be honest with you <laughs> when you ask that question two do you really want to know like how is it going to affect you have a past she has a past like you might just have to man up and say hey it is what it is because like do you like how much information do you want because there's a lot of dudes who may think they want that information, but they really don't. So that's just a question that I would suggest dudes don't ask that question. Because, you, I mean, you probably don't want to know. You just deal with, your, you've met her now, you're dealing with her now, deal with this point forward in your relationship. Um, somebody who says he's a bargain hunter, loves a good deal. So I am of the, the school of thought of being financially responsible, being financially literate and like moving towards financial independence. So being able to be smart with your money, like if you think that's a bad thing, then then maybe there is maybe there are dudes for you that also think that I don't think that's smart in the long run. Um, I don't think that's smart in the short run. But like if if you're a dude that deals with, you know, that that's financially on your square you're financially literate, you're working on building something, then this, that's probably not a relationship you want to be in. Somebody who themselves is not financially um, responsible and who wants you to be financially irresponsible. That's going to be, that's, that's going to be a problem. Especially if, if the relationships get serious, you'll wind up moving in together, you'll get married. Um, if one party is trying to save money and the other party is just spending it willy nilly, uh, that that's going to become a problem and it's amazing how many marriages fail because of financial problems you know financial considerations and that kind of friction so that's definitely a, a page you want to be on the same you want to make sure you're on the same page um, she speaks about going Dutch on dates um, and that a truly masculine man would never feel comfortable um, letting a woman pay for herself I think that's bull especially at the dating phase um especially in this day and age if you want to talk about uh empowered women like if a woman wants to take her man out cool like accept it like accept allow somebody to do something for you because that may bring them happiness they care about you and, and quite frankly if they care about you they will want to do things for you and vice versa, of course, a man should want to do things for his woman. If if you if you actually care about her, if she actually means something to her, you should want to take care of her, get things for her, make her happy. And, and it's it's not always going to be um, like if you're familiar with the was it the five love languages. There's different things that will mean different things to different people. But there's 
sometimes gifts are among those things in doing things for them, buying stuff for them. Um, sometimes it's just actually doing tasks for them, whether it be cooking, making a home cooked meal. That's what really makes her feel special. Um, and that's what may make him feel special. So in that case, it may be a woman and, you know, we go back to the being able to cook thing. If a woman is cooking a meal for a man that could really make him special. So in, in terms of not letting a man would never like that, that's just ridiculous. But once again, it seems like there's, there's a theme that she has expectations and she's telling women to have these expectations of just being, being, being dependents being financially dependent upon this person that they're dating, um, that they're involved with, that it is, is not healthy in many ways. And it's not just that it's not healthy for him. It's not just that you'll be taking advantage of him. It actually puts the woman in a very dangerous position. Because if you are completely dependent on somebody providing you food, um, and even she, she talks about um, uh, taking care of her, her looks and her, her makeup and stuff like that, her hair, if you're completely dependent on somebody to do these things for you, like, are they, what happens when they start using this as leverage? Like, okay, yeah, I want you to do this. I want you to do this and starts like putting conditions on you receiving, you know, the things, the things that you are now completely dependent upon them for. That's not a healthy relationship and that's not a good position to be in. Um, she speaks about bringing up sex on the first date or the first few conversations. Once again, this dep depends on what you want from a relationship. Um, but hey, if we're talking community building, if we're talking about um, strengthening, I mean, it would seem that like you would probably want to have more on your mind than just sex. Like you should actually want to know the person. You should actually want to um, have a eventual goal, even if even if you don't know if this is the person that that you're going to achieve that objective with, but of building something together. So if it's just about sex, well, in that case, make sure that's evident. Don't waste people's time. Um, Cause that's, that's another thing. If you're lying to a woman and telling her that you, you want to be with her, but you just want sex, come on. Um, there are women out there who, who are cool. They, for whatever reason, they're, um, they just don't want to get too emotionally attached to somebody and they're cool to just have um, somebody, you know, who's, who's down for, for sex. It, it's, but, don't lie to people and, you know, waste their time if they have other goals and they're, they, they want something more lasting, more something deeper. And then she talks about claims to like the natural look or plain Jane. So I think like that's definitely not a dusty joke because number one, so if we're talking about natural, there are plenty of black men that love natural hair because they love natural, like they, they not like natural, natural, the natural uh, black woman's natural hair. That's it. It's not about money it, it's about the fact that they don't like the artificial um pressed you know ironed uh and even if you look at the picture i've got malcolm x malcolm x talked about that how you, you had and this is decades ago how you could walk past shops where women where you could smell black women's hair being fried it's like hey there are plenty of black men who like natural um things like natural hair because for reasons not related to being a dusty, they, they actually like, they love black women and they love the, the actual beauty of a black woman. But she, she does raise the point that, you know, that they're just trying not to pay for, um, you know, the woman's upkeep, you know, her hair, her makeup and stuff like that. And they shouldn't be like, it's your hair and makeup. But like I said, if they want to, at some point, cool. But it's it's not somebody else's job to pay for your hair and makeup. But the the implication that unless they're willing to, and unless they're doing it, that that somehow makes them less than, is it's like well, what are your motivations? Like because it seems like what, so what exactly are you bringing to the relationship? If you want a man to pay for your hair, your food, your bills, like what exactly are you bringing to the relationship? Because if you think that that like you're basically he should be paying for the the presence of your company well does that mean you don't value the 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 presence of his company like what 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 are you bringing to the table and so this is why i say this this mindset seems to be not a great one but 
as I've seen from other videos, she is coming from a perspective not really focused on. <laughs> so yeah, because she, she yeah, she's criticized the you know black love and and she was, in fact I think in a later video she calls it like struggle love, which which means she's coming from a completely different area than you know it, you know like she's not trying to build black relationships into better and strong relationships. She has an agenda, and hey, that's that's her choice. But my advice for men out there, I d find out if th if this is your uh, uh, if you're dating someone, find out if this is her perspective, because you need to know sooner or later so that you're not wasting your time dealing with somebody who just wants uh, you to be a sugar daddy, you know. Uh, and if you if you have other other plans that she's not on board with, be upfront, communicate. So she's not wasting her time. So that's uh, that's just my review of this video, and of course, um, I'm gonna leave the links to her uh, her video, you know, this video that uh, I'm commenting on, in the description. And as always, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. And if you disagree with me and you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Feel free to do that. But as I always say, if you give me a thumbs down, be sure to put in the comments why. So I can address it in the comments or in a future video. Don't just give me a thumbs down and run and hide. All right. Thank you for checking out this episode. I'll see you next time.